Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Cheryl Technology Channel. I'm your host, Chris, back again with another video. Uh, today, we are going to be doing a video on Zenthal or Zenthal, Zen, Zen, Tial, however you say that. I'm going to give you kind of the benefits of Zenthal and why I'm going to use it and why you should use it. Okay, so welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. We call Zenthal Y'all Server, however you say that. The Cal is a client license. So basically what happens is in Windows Server, they have what's called Cal licensing, client access license. So it's the ability for a client, a Windows client, to access the server, right? It gives the, the client permission to access the server. Well, the problem with that is it is a license. And with Microsoft, they want you to pay for every little freaking thing that they do. In comes Zential. And that's what I love about this program. It is a Linux-based domain solution. Do you hear that? Domain solution. So it does a lot of different things. It'll do firewall, content filtering. It does, I mean, it does literally everything. So that's what I really wanted to look at at today let's say that you are a windows server right let's say you have two of them you have a user that's accessing both of them you have to have two user licenses one for each server now i'm not sure if you need so right here you can see here's the cal licenses right it's confusing as crap it's so bloody confusing uh oh so with a cal a device cal you purchase a cal for every device think about that now you're purchasing the client one for the user already, but then you have to purchase another license for every device that accesses it. That is ridiculous. That's why we're used doing this video because Zentheol takes all that out. You do not have to do any of that. Oh, let me find it. So right here, let's go to Zentheol. And right here, see, no disruption to your users, no user or device cows. They do away with it. It's Linux. What do you expect? It's free. It's not free. You should support the people that make it. So that's why I want to I wanna go over in this video how to install it. And it's just like any other distribution that I've done in the past. It's the same concept, the same path, the same things. Everything is the same. So let's go, y'all. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Join me on this adventure to install. You said it. You heard it from me first. Zentheol server. Let's go. What is Zentheol server? Now, it is an act it is a Linux-based Active Directory substitute for Windows Server. Windows Server is friggin' expensive. It is ridiculously expensive. As with every other Microsoft product that fails to perform, like if I could use if I could run Warzone on this machine in Linux, I wouldn't even have Windows. I wouldn't use it. Basically, that's what we're doing today. That's what it is. It's a substitute. It is actually a replacement, but we'll get into that way later. I've got other videos for that. Now, it implements the protocols used by Active Directory. And we want to, I'm not going to even get into that because that is a whole nother video and not in the context of this one. So we're going to, we'll do, we may do one later on that one. Write down in the comments if you want me to do a video on that. Now, download. First, we're going to go to the download. So you go to this community tab right here. See it right there? And you click download development edition. I've already downloaded it. I'm ready to install it. So you want it, the community version is for people who are wanting to learn, I believe. Now it, it you need to be able to, to use this by yourself. That's what the development edition, the community development edition is. It is for people who are wanting to learn, who don't want to pay for the support. That's what this version is for. That's what I'm going to tell you up front because you need to know that. Because if you run into an issue, it's not going to be fun for you unless you can go to the community and figure it out. Which is a possibility. That's the reason I like it. Now, the first, the OS can be installed on top of Ubuntu server or desktop, or you can take the ISO file and install it as an OS itself, which is the context of this video. That's what we're going to do tonight. So let's go. I like it because of the no cows, man. That that is the the epitome of what Windows is is a licensing monster. That's what it is. It's a licensing monster. That's all they know how to do is license people to death. Now we're going to transition into the install of of Zenthal, Zent Y'all. I like that better. 
<laughs> sounds better. Zental on Proxmox. So let's navigate to my server. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to upload this image to my server. So I click under, let's see, let me show y'all under the local Proxmox. Then I went to ISO images. See, and you can see all my other ones. We're going to click upload right now. We got to go find the file. Okay. So you downloaded an ISO file. We select file downloads. You can see it right here. Zentheol. So we're going to, we're going to double click that one and a half gig and we're going to upload and that's going to go really quick. Okay. See right here. Task. Okay. Finished file import successful. Now, now remember from our first video of, of Proxmox, I showed you how to install. Do you remember? Can any of y'all remember? Linux Mint. That's right. Linux Mint. So now we're going to install Proxmox because that's what we got up here. And our name is going to be Z-E-N-T-Y-A-L. Like that. We don't care about the resource pool because we don't need that. We're going to go to advanced, start at boot. We'll click next. ISO image. Remember, we just did it right there. Click next. And as in the last videos, I'm going to leave everything default. I'm not going to touch anything. We're going to move this up to 100 gig. Now, depending on what you want to do, it's up to you what you want to do. You could make this 100 gig. You could make this 20 gig. You could 35 gig, 50, whatever you want to make it. It doesn't really matter. We're going to do SSD sim emulation because all of this is running off of an SSD. Storage is local Proxmox. Remember, that is my SSD drive. So we're going to run it off of that. And then sockets, we're going to do one socket, four cores. I click next. And we're going to do eight gig of RAM. So I think it's 80. Let's see, it's uh 8192 i believe and i screwed up in the last video and said it was like 8096 or something i was wrong it's 8192 sorry uh click next yep that looks good because that is the bridge that everything else is going across i'm perfectly happy with that click next next finish and we're going to start it as soon as it's created boom now we go right here see go to our console and then we wait. Now watch this, watch this. And then we go, so it's more of a text base. Y'all see that? Boom, that looks good to me. So I've learned that it's a little slow going from the, the physical disc, the spinning disc, but once it hits that SSD storage, it gets way, way fast. And let's go here. We're going to hit enter next. Yep. United States. Good to go. English. Yep. Yep. All USB or all, um, all enters and yes. And us, that's where we're at. And we'll be back as soon as this, as soon as this install is done and we are back and we got to the configure the network. Please get into the host name. I am perfectly happy with tab and then continue tab. Okay. Username. Yeah, whatever. That's good. Enter. Now the passwords, we're going to do uh, this right here. Now, depending on your environment, you want to keep your passwords complicated, especially if it's in a production environment. Mine might a little bit, but not really. So yeah, we are in Denver. As you already know, we're not in Denver. We're close to Denver. We're not there. I will be back in a minute as soon as all of this is done. And we are back again, again and again and again. It never ends. Oh, I, I made that rhyme. Okay, y'all. So let's finish the installation. Let's hit continue. And that took about 10 minutes or so ish, something like that. Did you see it unmounted the systems. Now it's going to boot back up and we wait just a second. So let's see what happened. This is such, this is so, oh shoot. Woo. That, that made me nervous. I've never seen that error before. So basically what Zentheol, 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 Zentheol does is it's going to replace Windows Server for me. It's free. That's number one. That's, it's Linux. That's that's the other reason to get it. And three, you can learn something. That's the three reasons to get it. Now, don't worry. I've walked you through every step of this process. Y'all don't be afraid to try new things. If you, if there's something you want to learn, then learn it. Just, just go do it. I mean, there's plenty of content on YouTube, like my channel. There's other channels too, that do basically the same thing I do. And we all do it a different way. We all do it our own way. I'm a little weird, but that's okay. So then we wait. So right now it's installing, installing the Zintial core packages. And once it's done, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the final part of our video. And now Zint, Zint y'all is installed everybody. Now the end always comes everybody. It, it always comes. I'm very sad that this video is over, but not to worry. I hope you learned something and I hope you continue to learn and make sure that you hit that like button, comment and subscribe to my channel, Cheryl Technology. And thank you for watching everybody. May you continue to learn new things each and every day. Although they may be uncomfortable, that's okay.
It is imperative for you to learn something every day in your life. Every day, learn something new. And remember, you are love. Peace, everybody.